Here inside of my project, I have a page model. It has a title string field and a slug field at the moment. What we want to do is then create a relation that is a GraphQL union type. We'll give this relation a name of blocks and we'll link it to the testimonial, gallery, content block, and blog post models. This will then mean whenever we create content, we can create content for any one of those. And when we query it, we can query for the data on each of those different models. And that can then turn to render different components on the front end. So let's dive in and see how powerful this is. So just like you would create any other reference, we're gonna check the box here to allow multiple models. Let's go ahead and choose blog post, gallery, testimonial, and content block. Then let's go ahead and make this a one to many relation. Then let's continue. And we'll call this blocks. And we'll give this name of blocks as well. The reverse field is what links the testimonial gallery content block and blog post back to the page model. In this case, we'll leave the name as page. Now you'll see here, the reference is any one of these four models. Let's switch to editing some content. Now, if we create a new page with the name home and the slug home, we can then create and add a new document. But because this is a GraphQL union type, we can create a relation to any one of these four models. And this is because we configured this when we created the schema. So let's go ahead and we will create a new gallery. Let's just give this some text of hello. We'll not connect an image, but we'll save and publish. Then let's go ahead and let's create a new testimonial. And then we'll go ahead and save and publish that testimonial. Then let's create one final content block. You can choose to add images if you wish. We'll save and publish this without. Then let's go ahead and save this new page. So let's go ahead and save and publish there. And what we can now see is we have these blocks. We can then rearrange these and this will then determine the output when we query those. Let's save that reorder. Then let's head over to the API playground and make a query for our homepage. I'm going to use the GraphQL Explorer to get a list of all of my pages. And for each of those pages, I want to get the slug, the title, and then I want to get the different blocks that are here. So if we click blocks, we can now see we have blog post, content block, gallery, and testimonial. So first, let's fetch any blog posts. Then if we scroll down and we query for the content block, then if we query for the gallery, and we get the title there, and notice you can fetch the related images as well. Let's fetch a handle for that, although we don't have an image attached that will query then if we finally query for the testimonial, we will get the customer name and the exit. Then if we have a look at the query that this has generated, we can see here that we are querying for all of the blocks on our page. We are first getting the blog post, then the content block, then the gallery, and finally the testimonial. Let's also query for the type name. And this is really useful for when you are creating a front end to know what kind of component to show. Then let's go ahead and run this query. We can now see that the order matches what we have inside of the content editor. We have our testimonial first, then our gallery with images if we had them, and then we finally have the content block. So you can already see that we have a relation called blocks, but it's not just to one type of model, it's to multiple. And this is really powerful when building marketing landing pages or any pages where you have repeatable fields. 